all, my name is Eyal Markovic, CEO of Blogsrout. Uh, Blogsrout has been helping a uh, searcher on DeFi in the last uh, four years. And so what I, what I thought that I'll uh, share with you today is a few things that uh, I've seen in the last uh, year, two years, how uh, traders are winning more on DeFi. And obviously, we'll talk about the uh, changes after the merge, and because that's uh, affected the, uh, the way that the uh, searchers are working. Do we have any searchers here? Traders? Cool. So <clears throat> first of all, let me, tell, let me share with you, if you don't know, DeFi is extremely com uh, competitive. Okay? It was very competitive before the merge and it didn't change anything. On every opportunity that uh, a trader is trying to extract MEV, there are basically 10 to 50 other competitors that are trying to extract the same MEV, okay? So this is how, uh, <coughs> how uh, competitive it is. There are basically three things that are required in order to succeed. You need a better infrastructure because Really on DeFi, every millisecond count. You need a better strategy. Uh, some uh, strategy are easy, some are, uh, uh, strategies are hard in terms of uh, compute, in terms of risk on the trader, whether they are atomic uh, strategy or not. And the last thing that you need is basically a good execution and luck. Okay, so we'll talk about uh, We'll talk about that. So when you think about what happened uh, with the transaction on Ethereum, basically transactions are being generated by users. Users can generate transactions anywhere in the world using wallet like MetaMask or any other wallet. And transactions are also being created by uh, DEXs, by, um, uh, by project. The message here, Transactions can be created anywhere in the world. You don't know whether it's going to be created in uh, the US, in Europe, anywhere. Now, some of those transactions are making changes to that, effect, that, create, that are creating arbitrage. For example, a swap transaction large volume might create a, a, a price change on one DEX. And that will create an arbitrage because the different uh, decks still have the old uh, price. Liquidation on, uh, on, uh, for user that create uh, an arbitrage because a user, a trader that can capture that will get uh, the ability to execute trade on a lower uh, price. <clears throat> so if you are a searcher, you, are, you need to find those uh, transactions, those transactions that are creating the arbitrage, I call them trigger transaction. You need to find those trigger transactions. You need to create your, uh, your trade to capture the MEV, and you need to execute that, and you need to beat all the other 20 or 30 searchers that are doing the same. <laughs> so two days ago, I participated with the event together with Block Native. I don't really like those two slides that I'm going to show you. Uh, I think they are explaining, <coughs> explaining what's happening right, uh, very well. <coughs> so a user is signing a transaction within its wallet, submit the transaction uh, through the peer-to-peer -peer network, through the Ethereum network, and the transaction get into the mempool. Mempool, there's nothing like a single mempool. Every node has its own uh, mempool, and a searcher is basically looking on, it, on the mempool and trying to identify those trigger transactions that we talked about. <clears throat> if a searcher, if a searcher identifies a trigger transaction, searcher create uh, their, uh, their uh, uh, trade and submit it to the builder. If there was no uh, trigger transaction, the searcher is not involved and the transaction uh, appears in the builder mempool the same way that they appears in the searcher mempool. The builder create the block, submit it to the relay, to the validator. Anyone here that is not familiar with 
PBS on Ethereum post-merge, don't know what I'm talking about, then I'll talk a little bit about that. <coughs> so really, in order to win, in order to win uh, DeFi uh, trading, you basically need three things. You need to see and identify the trigger transactions. So that's identify blocks and transactions very fast. Then you need to have a very good strategy, a very good program. It's called the trading bot to, to uh, compute uh, your trade to capture the MEV. So we're not going to talk about that. And then you need to submit your transaction to, the, to eventually get into the block. Over here, we're talking about two different type of execution. You might send a transaction through the peer-to-peer, -peer, mempool transaction, or you might send a transaction that is private. So you, you might hear someone talk about Flashbot bundle. That is also a private uh, type of transaction. So we'll talk about those in, uh, in more detail. So first of all, how do you, discuss, how do you identify a transaction, trigger transaction within the mempool? <clears throat> there are several ways to do that. You can, if you're running your own Ethereum node, you can uh, get a, a stream of transaction from the node through a, a standard Web3 endpoint that the node is providing. If you're going to do that, you're not going to win because you're going to be way too... Uh, 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 <clears throat> too slow. There are service providers, for example, like us, that are giving uh, mempool uh, data significantly faster, so that can be 100, 200 milliseconds faster. Remember, we're talking here millisecond, nanosecond, so we're not talking here about minutes delay. So you can get mempool transaction 100 milliseconds faster through a service like us, which give you uh, uh, give you some edge in order to <coughs> compute your, uh, uh, your trade. <coughs> and there are some, uh, some tools. Okay, so you, some t tools that allow you to compare between when am I getting the transaction from, from my node, when am I getting the transaction from Infura, when am I getting the transaction from Blockstrout, and so on, and allow you to know whether you ever even a chance. <clears throat> Another tool that this is actually coming from us and it's free is the ability to see for each transaction, and usually you're doing it only on the trigger transaction, where exactly was it in the world? When did we see it in, uh, in uh, Europe? When did we see it in the uh, in, in US? And then you can compare the time that you identify it versus the time that uh, our network identify it, and if you are behind, then you know that you need to improve your infrastructure. <clears throat> so how can you get faster? <clears throat> First of all, you should not use the node uh, pending transaction. It's just too slow. Some traders are running uh, their arb uh, arbitrage, but not in one place in 50 different places, just to hear about uh, things uh, a few milliseconds faster and execute their trade faster. Uh, <clears throat> if you're using solution like us for the BDN, you want to co-locate with us, you want to uh, get closer to us, it's all about reducing latency. And <clears throat> you also, if you're running a node, you want to improve the quality of your peers, or use a solution like what we have, it's called Upscale, to improve node discovery. But the idea here is don't rely on the default configuration of a node. It just, it's good for the, for the normal project. It's not good for uh, DeFi. <coughs> so here's, for example, uh, this is a, from, a, again, an, a free tool that we offer called BDN Explorer. And you can see there where most of the transactions are entering the BDN in the world. And that gives you a sense 
which region you might want to consider to run your, uh, your trading bot. Another metric that you want to, to, uh, to monitor is where do you get the trigger transaction? Where do you get transaction in, in, in general? <clears throat> this is, for example, a metric that we provide if you're connecting to us. How many transactions are you getting from us first? If you have uh, 20 peers in your node, for each uh, no peer you want to uh, monitor that and you want to make sure that the peers, every peer is ex very expensive because there is a, a number of slots that the, peer, uh, the node can uh, support. You want to make sure that you are getting enough data and you're not wasting a peer slot on that. <coughs> so that's about getting, hearing about the trigger transaction. That's, that's the key. Without uh, doing it fast, you, you have uh, uh, less uh, chances to succeed. Now, slot in Ethereum is every 12 seconds post-merge. If you are going to identify a trigger transaction in the first four seconds of a slot, nothing bad happens. Like, if you're going to identify it with 200 millisecond delay versus the competitors, nothing really, nothing bad happens. Because you, have, you still have eight seconds to execute your trade. But if we are at the last two seconds of the slot, the, and you, are, you will have 200, 300 millisecond delay, your chances to succeed went from 20% to 0.1%. So you want to invest in infrastructure, especially for the last few seconds of the slot, because this is when validators are going to get their block from the builder, and if you are not, if your, if your transaction is not part of the block, of course you didn't win. <coughs> so, how do you get faster in terms of sending transaction? First of all, it depends whether you are sending a public transaction, a mempool transaction, or whether you are sending a private or a Flashbot uh, bundle. If you are not familiar with what is Flashbot bundle, you should read about it after the, <coughs> after the presentation. So if you, are sending, if you are sending your transaction to extract MEV as a public, not too many traders are doing it. Some traders are doing it. Some uh, hundred of ETH MEV extraction was with public transaction in the last year. So it's still, it's still uh, happening from time to time. If you want to do that, you want to make sure that you are uh, connected to very good peers that can get your transaction as fast as possible to the builder. Uh, that can be a peer like the, uh, like the BDN, like our network, or that can be uh, nodes that are connected to the builder nodes. But if it's going to take 400, 500 milliseconds for the builder to get your uh, transaction through the peer-to-peer, -peer, and it's the end of the slot, or close to the end of the slot, or actually the beginning of the next slot, you lost. <laughs> Another thing that you want to consider is <coughs> A different RPC. So if you, are a, if you are a searcher and you submit your transaction to an RPC, then some RPC, RPC will be much faster than the other. So uh, invest the time to measure the RPC performance. Here's an example that basically when you look on RPC performance, you are looking on inclusion rate. How long does it take until my transaction gets into the block? Okay. <clears throat> Usually for MEV extraction, it's one, it, it must be one, one block. After one block, it's usually uh, MEV was extracted by a different uh, searcher. <clears throat> but as you can see here, there are some RPC that uh, it can take five to ten blocks uh, sometimes, sometimes it's one. It really depends whether the block was created by the owner of the RPC. Uh, 
some RPCs forward the blocks like us, forward the blocks to all the other uh, builder, and that's why the, the inclusion rate is, is better. <coughs> so let's talk a little bit about block building. If you are a validator, if you are a validator it's your, and it's your turn in, in the next slot to create the block, you are basically the proposer. The proposer will uh, issue a request to several MEV builders to get the best block. The MEV relay at that point will return the best block that it has. Uh, now, the MEV relay is getting blocks from different builders, basically getting the block, checking which block is the best for the validator, and in the end, when the validator is going to ask for the, <coughs> for the block, the relay will return the block. You as a searcher, you as a searcher, once you created your uh, trade, you submit your, your trade. Usually, as I said, as a flashbot bundle, you submit your trade to several builders. Okay? So you want, as a trader, to make sure that the builder will get your bundle enough time before creating the block. So when the builder creates the block, it will include your bundle. Otherwise, you lost the chance. <coughs> who are the major relay and who are the major builder? The best tool to see that is called Relay Scan. ReliScan.io. That's the tool that uh, <coughs> that uh, you want to uh, <coughs> to look at. You can see on the left side. You can see the different. Uh, <coughs> You can see the different relays. You can see our, we have one here, 21%. That was uh, last week, so 20, it's of course changed every, every day. 21%, if, uh, and we have two more. So around 30% of the block space is coming from our relay. <coughs> and on the right side, you can see the different, uh, you can see the different builder. So you can see some builder can, create about 22% of the block, and some, building, some builders create very low number of blocks uh, <coughs> per day. <coughs> there are basically two types of builder. <coughs> what the first type is infrastructure builders. So those are builders that are <coughs> uh, getting public transactions from their mempool and bundle from searchers. And with some sophisticated algorithm, they are aggregating all those bundles and transactions into a block to create the best block possible. Those uh, uh, type of builder are, for example, Flashbot, Blockstrout, uh, are also those types, uh, that type of builder. <coughs> those builders are not creating their own transaction. They are not a searcher by themselves. The other type of builder are searchers. So some searchers that you will compete with or the other searchers are competing with are actually builder by themselves. They have a huge advantage, especially if they have a lot of uh, uh, liquidity. They have a huge, uh, a huge advantage and many times they are winning uh, the block. And you will not be able to win your, uh, your trade and your DeFi unless you get to their, uh, to their RPC and get included within their block as well. So how can you get to the builder? Of course, if it's a peer-to-peer, -peer, then it's happen automatically because the builder have, have a, a node and the node is connected to the peer-to-peer. If it's a bundle, you want to submit the bundle to their, uh, to their RPC, unless that's a builder that is a searcher and you are considering that they are competing with you, okay? Because some of them, as I said, is a searcher and they can get your bundle, they can look at what you did, and they can say, wow, this is cool. I can, I can earn 100 ETH here, so I'm gonna do exactly the same and forget about yours and just uh, do it. And they have uh, a few, uh, enough milliseconds uh, uh, to do that. <coughs> 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 
As I mentioned, everything in uh, ETH 2.0 is with a slow time of 12 seconds. And as a searcher, you really must think with the boundaries of a slot. So to get your bundle to a builder, you must get your bundle before the, before the, the blocks are ready at the, at the relay, before the validator or the proposer requested the block from the relay. So we can see over here, this is based on last week 800 blocks that I just randomly pick. 149 milliseconds before the end of, before the beginning of the slot. Uh, the, the winning block, those are the winning blocks, already exi existed at the, at the relay. So if you are sending uh, your transaction 100 milliseconds before the beginning of the slot, most likely you, uh, you are gonna miss the, the chance to get included. So when you submit your bundle, of course you can control to which builder to send the bundle, you can control uh, when to send the bundle. For some opportunities, it's very critical to time the, the bundle submission both in terms of when the builders is, uh, uh, when, when to send it in terms of the block, but more because your strategy might be something that is affected by uh, an external, uh, external signal. For example, if your strategy is CFI DeFi. So if your strategy is CFI DeFi, you know that the DeFi on Ethereum happens every 12 seconds, but the CFI, constantly happening. So you might want to delay your, your trade, your final trade, just a few, uh, maybe a second, 500 milliseconds, two, two seconds before the slow time and not do it two seconds uh, or 10 seconds before the slow time. So it's really depend on your strategy and depending on the risk that you are <laughs> willing to, uh, to take. <clears throat> Here's uh, some data, data from the field. Last 100 bundle last week when I uh, created that slide. And you can see <clears throat> by average 5.6 seconds before the slow start time most of the bundle arrived. But on the other hand, you can see that in the last two seconds of the, before the slow time, uh, we see an increase in the number of, uh, of bundles. So it really depends on the type of bundle. If it's uh, things like sandwich attack, it doesn't really matter uh, when you send it, so you can send it immediately. But if it's things like CFI, DeFi, you, you, you want to wait until the end of the, of the slot. <laughs> so the last few things that I want to talk about before, <laughs> see if you have any questions, is, is if you are a trader and you're just starting, <laughs> how do you travel uh, shoot? <laughs> so first thing you want to know is who won the block. Okay, so who won block is really uh, which builder created the block, okay? And which Mev relay uh, created the block because you want to make sure that in the next uh, time you are going to submit your bundle to maybe the same builder and you want to make sure that the builder that you're submitting to is working with that, uh, <coughs> with that relay. So you can go to beaconcha.in, that's the leading uh, <coughs> explorer for uh, the beacon data and you can type the slot number and you, you will see the relay that won. Uh, that's, there's, there really has quite a lot of uh, endpoint data, API endpoint that you might use to get additional information. We're not going to cover it, but if, if it's an interesting uh, thing for you, you might want to look for the data API of the MEV relay. <coughs> and the last thing is how do you know which uh, builder created the block? You can take the 
you can get it uh, obviously also from, uh, from the Explorer, but you can also go to Etherscan, zoom into the block, and if you look on the extra data, just, you're going to see which builder in this example. You can see it's builder 69. All right, let's see if you have any questions. Cool, thank you, thanks for coming.